This is the day I realized why creating a simple site plan should never be overlooked in construction. There I was on site standing in between two of over 100 semi truck deliveries and I can hear the clock ticking towards substantial completion. Now each truck was entering the job site carrying multiple 40 foot concrete precast panels with each panel weighing well over six tons ready to be craned up into the air and installed on the building. Now I'm just standing there watching everything unfold. As I'm just starting out my career, I'm wide eyed and feeling pretty good that we've made it to this point in the project. However, I'm about to realize any second now why having a bad site plan can ruin a project and create some of the worst job sites ever. So in today's video, we're gonna take a trip into what I'll refer to as a lesson learned. We're gonna find out what can happen when you have a bad site plan, the absolute necessary things to pay attention to when making a good site plan, and how to make your own site plan specific to any project. So let's go. All right, we're gonna flash back more than 10 years ago to a younger, better looking version of myself. Wait, come on now, who's telling this story? Okay, but the most important thing, this younger version of myself was still actively learning as I had just joined this big world of construction. My superintendent approaches me and asks if I can put together the site logistics plan. And I'm thinking in this moment, oh, wow, some recognition. And I say, sure, no problem. But here's the thing, I've never put together a site logistics plan for any construction project. So I do what any wise person does. I quickly jump online and Google search what is a site logistics plan? And what do I find on the internet? Well, nothing. So I print out a copy of the design team's site plan, which is a drawing sheet that can be found in the civil set of drawings. I start adding things like site fencing, the temporary construction road, the tracking pads, the crane pad, the job site trailer, some material lay down, some parking, and I write big and bold at the top, the site logistics plan. I hand it back over to the site superintendent. Well, a few weeks go by and given that I haven't heard anything back, I'm thinking, wow, you really know what you're doing. So it turns out I didn't hear from that site superintendent because he actually got assigned to a different project. And this project has been given a new superintendent, which I don't really think is a big deal at the time. Well, let's fast forward these three months into the project schedule. And here we are again, right in the middle of the largest precast delivery I have ever seen. So remember that entrance and exit I marked up? Well, it turns out I didn't account for the allowable weight limits on the main road entering the job site. So as I'm standing there, I'm getting call after call from the city who's just told me that they're getting ready to pay us a visit due to some neighboring complaints. And while I'm dealing with these precast deliveries that have now come to a complete halt and are backing up the entire job site, I also get a call from the site electrician. It just so happens that the electrician was calling to tell me how the job site trailer I positioned on the site plan happens to be right on top of where the main electrical underground duct bank is supposed to go. Oh boy, you screwed up big time. And to top it all off, the big boss, my wife, calls to say, Honey, I forgot your lunch at home. Well, I'm standing there thinking I may as well hoist the white flag and pack up my belongings. It's been a fun ride and it's been nice knowing everybody. But right in the middle of all this, I look over at my site superintendent who is as steady as a rock, calmer than calm. And this is the moment I learned a side lesson in construction, which is that there is always an answer to even the toughest scenarios. So my superintendent jumps into action and redirects truck after truck of precast deliveries to enter where the current exit is on the site plan. And in talking to the city, they figured that the weight of the truck after the precast is unloaded becomes light enough to legally drive down the road they previously could not have. So quickly after changing the exit to the entrance has allowed these now lighter trucks to leave the site without any issues. The city shakes hands with the superintendent and my heart rate starts to slow down just slightly but there's still the electrician to deal with. So my superintendent walks over to the site electricians and after just a brief phone call with the electrical engineer, we've now been allowed to shift the underground electrical duct bank slightly over to avoid the trailer without impacting anything else. 
And I'm thinking, wow, this superintendent just saved my life. We just avoided disaster. No help to my original plan. The flow of the job site was back on track. So finally, my superintendent makes his way back over to me, looks down and says, let's go grab some lunch and fix your site logistics plan. Oh, and you're buying. So we're walking back to the job site trailer and all I can think about is how my site plan made it this far into the project. But I forgot the most important aspect of construction, which is good communication. I never communicated the site plan to the new superintendent who could have helped me revise this months ago. It became a reoccurring lesson to me that individuals come and go from job sites all the time. So there is a constant need to bring people up to speed no matter what your role may be. So at this point, I'm understanding why having a bad site logistics plan could potentially cause havoc on any project. The next thing my superintendent asked me was if I had ever visited the site in person prior to making this plan, which had never even crossed my mind when I was putting this together in the first place. Now, construction drawings won't tell you the weight limits of local roads, where nearby fire hydrants are for water access, where overhead obstructions such as trees or power lines might be, as well as everything else that needs to be taken into consideration when developing a site logistics plan. So I'll always physically visit a job site and take a ton of photos for reference prior to a project starting and prior to making any site plan. The next big issue my superintendent and I tackled was the placement of the job site trailer. Now, we were stuck in this situation because I didn't consider future underground work that needed to take place, which wasn't reflected on the site's civil plan that I had originally printed out. I would have needed to look at the site underground electrical plan to understand this and avoid this issue. And if you've watched my drawing review videos, you'll recall I always stress the importance of reading through all of the drawings to understand the entirety of the project for scenarios just like this. So what's the easiest way to avoid a conflict when placing a trailer, material laydown, a crane pad, or just marking any other location on a job site? Well, we can easily accomplish this by flipping through the drawings and marking up as we review each drawing page, or even better, completing a drawing overlay using software such as Bluebeam. Here's an example of another project showing that overlaid plan, which is slightly cluttered, but we can see and prevent issues from happening by running through this quick exercise. I do cover how to do this in my Bluebeam tips and tricks video, so check that out if you want to learn more and how to create an overlay just like this. So we've learned that we need to be aware of future scope that's going to take place on the project, but more importantly, we're doing all of these things to create some sort of flow on the job site. Now, not every job site is going to have the space for material laydown or deliveries, which needs to be a consideration when approaching contractors at bid time. Think about projects that take place in downtown in busy spaces. Material gets pulled right off the truck. There is no material laydown, but it has to be organized in a way as to not cause any sort of backup of traffic or similar. So this level of planning and pre-planning needs to be part of every construction project because without this, you can cause some serious delays to the contractors on site. So this plan needs to consider all facets of the project from start to finish as it's the lifeblood of the project. Flow on a job site is so critical and underestimated that it needs to be thoroughly considered, which is why I suggest that the project manager and the superintendent sit together to create this. Not only that, but the site logistics plan should actually be part of the overall contract bid package that's sent out at the bidding phase to the bidding contractors. So not only your team is on board with it, but all the other contractors have this information and the opportunity to review this and provide some feedback at that time. So the best Best site plans are made after you visited and reviewed the site in person, after you understand the full scope of the project, after you understand the logistics needed to put material in place, but most importantly, after a good lunch. But really, I can't tell you how many times throughout a project someone needs the information on how to get to the job site, where the job site trailer is, where deliveries are supposed to go, how trucking is supposed to be routed. So you make this plan once and then you can easily share it with new contractors, new material vendors, architects, owners, the list goes on. All right, so I'm gonna keep it brief. That's all I've got for now. I'd suggest getting your hands on a drawing set and giving this a go yourself. So as always, be better, build better, and bye for now. Aww.